So we'll get started. Um, hey, everyone, I'm Pam Mertz, I'm a longtime NSA-er. Um, I know many of you from just the introdu introdu introductions that, 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 that we've just done. And um, I'm really hap 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 happy to be involved in this um, NSA Connect session tonight. Um, our love-hate relationship with Zoom. Uh, which I think is going to be a fun conversation. And we have um, a, 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 a guest and a, and a newcomer to the NSA commu community that uh, from Blackstone that is really interested in um, talking about um, the benefits and the pitfalls maybe of um teleconferencing. So I want to introduce my co-facilitator, Brendan Conway. Brendan, take it away. Uh, thank you, Pam. Appreciate that. Appreciate that introduction. Um, I don't believe I've met any of you on the call. So uh, very, 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 very pleased to meet all of you. Uh, as Pam said, my name's Brendan Conway. Um, and I'm a person who stutters. Uh, I, I have been as long as I, long as I can remember, and um, uh, yeah. In, in fact, my my mother, uh, my mother was also a person who stuttered, um, although I did not ever um, kind of hear her stuttering, which 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 was an interesting dynamic, um, something that we can come back to later. But um, yeah, I, I had years of speech therapy. Uh, although, although kind of, kind of the severity of my, my stutter has waxed and waned over, over time. Um, some of you, I'm sure, are are like me in the sense that you, you, uh, you spend some mental energy, kind of scanning your words ahead of time. You know, you, you, you become very good at, become very good at choosing your words. Um, of course, that, of course. Uh, takes a toll that, that there, there's, there's, there's a price to that. Um, you know, pa Pam and I were talking and Tammy, and we thought that this topic of, of teleconferencing was, was a very important one. And, and it's one that I think for, you know, for, for many of us, such as myself, it's, it's been staring us in the face for the last three years. And I'm sure as you're going about your business, going about your day, you might have some thoughts to yourself, some sidebars um, about what it's like to be a person who stutters uh, using Zoom, using Teams, using these technologies. Maybe some of, some of you have been using them beforehand. Um, that's, that's something we should talk about because you've, you've, you've probably been thinking about this a lot longer than someone like, someone like myself has. But we 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 just we thought that uh, this was a great topic for people to bring out into the open, because obviously uh, communicating over Zoom poses challenges for everybody, but but I think it poses special challenges for for people who stutter. Um, so my my goal here is to spend about ten minutes telling you about myself uh, and giving you my thoughts on the topic. And then I'm going to shut up for a while because this should be interactive. Uh, I know Pam has some 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 very strong opinions on it. Um, I'm sure all of you do. All of you who 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 kind of use teleconferencing on on a regular basis uh, think the same thing. But um, let, let let me just give you a little more background on myself. Uh, I'm one of the people that Pam and others refer to as as a covert stutterer. Um, I kind of wing it at work, and um, people pick up on on my disfluency, and I don't ever explain it. Um, I don't. I don't feel the need to. Um, I think most people don't notice it, and um, I'm sure I've 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 paid a price for that uh, to uh, to uh, to 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 some degree, in the sense that um, like like many of us. Who stutter? I don't always uh, go after opportunities. Maybe the way that I could. Uh, I know that there are certain situations where my own feelings about my stutter 
are are are, are going to influence uh, kind of how I feel. Um, so that's another topic to come back to. But uh, just generally, I've always thought of myself as a person who loves to communicate. Um, and so from an early age, I, I pursued writing. Uh, you probably heard this one before that people people who stutter who want to communicate. What are you going to do? Maybe you're going to gravitate toward something that doesn't use your speech as much. Although, as I learned over over the course of my career, you can never run away from who you are. You can never run away from your stutter. Um, it, it's it's kind of part of who you are, and you 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 need to be at peace with it. So, what I found over time is, as my career progressed, um, more and more I was speaking to large groups. I was speaking first to smaller groups, but then to rooms full of hundreds of people. Um, yeah, and so I'm sure like many of you have have found yourselves. Um, if you if you want to move ahead in life, there's nothing that you could do except to except to confront this head on and 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 just deal with it. Having said that, I am I am still a person who is covert, who um, you know, doesn't raise it formally uh, in most of my work situations. Uh, so that's a bit about me and kind of um, who I am. Uh, I spent a uh, portion of my early career as a journalist. I then moved into some uh, financial companies where, where I do client roles, I do communications uh, type roles, which is part of the reason I care about this subject so much. So let's just dive into it, teleconferencing and, and stuttering. Um, I started with a new company, I think during the second week of kind of the work from home in March, April, 2020. Um, and so right away, Zoom was um, kind of central to uh, my efforts to establish myself at, at this new company. Thankfully, I had lots of good relationships um, kind of, kind of from, 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 from prior. Um, but what I, what I, what I, what I noticed right away and to the, to the, uh, kind of the, uh, title of this workshop, right. Our, our love hate relationship with Zoom. I'm going to start with the hate and then end on, end with the, end with the love. Uh, the part that was the hate, I, I, I right away, I right away noticed early on that, I was not speaking as as much as maybe I optimally would. Uh, when you're when you're when you're when you're in this Zoom world, uh, I do feel like it it um, it makes you more keenly aware of when 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 people when people get together in a room, um, people who are fluent, people who stutter. There's kind of this social bond. Language is just an amazing thing when you think about it. Um, kind of staring us plain in the face every day where people people are finishing each other's sentences. And, um, you know, there's there's a whole body of academic work about how, how unique human speech is. And then you transfer that to Zoom. And I, I, I think the first thing I will say is that the people who built these technologies do this incredible job of trying to be as seamless as possible and not get in the way of that kind of uh, uh, spontaneous connection. Now, having said that, I think we have all seen each other um, kind of trip over each other's words and people speaking simultaneously. And, you know, Zoom takes some of the humanity um, kind of, kind of out of it. And as you know, for a, for a, for a person like me, uh, so, so, so my starter is I block on particular sounds. Um, I have a hard time with, uh, compound R sounds. So, uh, words that begin with BR, which is very unfortunate given my first name, uh, Brendan there, I, was, I got it. I did well that time, but I have a hard time with sounds like that. Uh, I often have a hard time with words that begin with a vowel, like a word that begins with an E. 
And I just found that Zoom made it uh, kind of all the more challenging at first. It was just harder. It was harder to, to kind of get over those blocks when I, I'm spending part of my mental effort already scanning my words ahead of time uh, to try to to try to not start with words that I know are going to block me, uh, block me in front of people I don't really even know yet. People who I haven't met in the flesh, <laughs> I only know them through a screen. Um, and so that that really started me thinking about 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 the downsides, uh, which which there are many, and uh, I'm, I'm sure some of you on the line will. We'll, we'll have some examples of those in a moment. But that sort of got me thinking a bit about, um, are there any pros? Like, what are the pros of, of, of teleconferencing? And, you know, talking with Pam ahead of this call when we were planning this, it's so funny because there's, there's an obvious pro, it might be obvious to all of you, that was not obvious to me. And I was only made aware of it thanks to Pam, which is that Zoom has this chat function. And you can, if you're not feeling fluent or if you're just anybody, you can put in your question to the group or you can put in a statement. Uh, my, my company, because of who they are, they've, they've actually disabled all that from Zoom. Uh, we're, we're actually very strict about the, the types of communications we can do. Um, and so I, I actually had no idea that that even um, was was <clears throat> was was there. Um, and so that to me, you know, even though in in an ideal world, a, a person who stutters wouldn't avoid speaking and would take this route to type, ideal world aside, um, that's something that exists. That's one way that your voice could be heard over Zoom. So that was interesting. Uh, but I, I would just add that for me, the, um, on, the, on the plus side, uh, as soon as I realized that I was pulling back, I almost kind of started to view it as, okay, this is kind of performative, right? Like appearing on Zoom in a way is, you're, you're putting yourself into a persona, maybe you could, if you wanted to, that that is not necessarily uh, the same persona that people would perceive in a room, and um, just just as is the case where if if maybe you first met someone over this kind of setting like a Zoom and the person seemed very imposing and you know very powerful or something, and maybe you thought of them as oh this person must be very very tall. Let's, let's, let's just, let's just take that attribute. Let's take height as an attribute. Um, and then you meet them in person and they're actually not tall. You might be surprised. Uh, I, I do think that there is a similar dynamic that, that, um, that, 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 that can go on with Zoom, uh, where, where you kind of step almost outside of yourself. Uh, so that, that was one interesting facet of it. Um, and then and this is the last point I make, and then I, I want to pass it to you guys. I want to pass it to Pam, who has some interesting prompts, interesting questions. The other one was I was brought back uh, to the years of speech therapy that I had as a child, where um, as a child and into my teen years and into my, into my early adult years, where the, the speech therapist would, would have particular techniques uh, that he or she would want me to use. Uh, I'm sure some of these te techniques, I'm dating myself, I'm gonna make clear how old I am. Some of these techniques are probably not even in use anymore. They might be discredited, but so, so, some of them I would think, I, I don't really wanna use that in a, in a, in a room with other people, but, but there's something about this disintermediation or, 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 or intermediation of Zoom that would make me more willing to, for instance, um, do 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 like a little little exhale before I spoke, like something that would be noticed in a room, but over Zoom people are not going to notice it. Um, so yeah, so th th those were kind of 
some of the some of the things that occurred to me as um, you know on the on the spectrum of love hate of, of teleconferencing, um, they certainly weren't weren't as far as love, but they were certainly in the realm of uh, maybe maybe this is a medium that is not as negative for me as a person who stuttered as at, 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 um, as as I first thought. Uh, so with that, I think I've taken up uh, more time than I said I would, and I want to pass it to either to Pam or, or or to anyone on the line who has a strong reaction uh, so we can make this a dialogue. So let me ask you a really quick question, uh, Bre Brend Brendan, first. Um, so do you continue to use telecon con con conferencing and zoom at work or have you like migrated back to mostly in-person stuff oh yeah that's that's a good that's a good point pam so my my company is very office centric um I, i'm there um almost five days a week or many weeks i'm there five days a week usually i'm there four but what what i found interestingly enough is that prior to covid where you'd have a meeting that didn't have Zoom or didn't have teleconferencing, now it has teleconferencing. And so um, given, given, given that dynamic, I'm actually using it um, like probably two or three hours a day minimum, um, either from my office or from a conference room where we're teleconferencing other people in. That's mm -hmm. actually a really important point because I, I think that um, one of the reasons this topic matters so much is, is that even for those of us who are back in an office, um, it, it really is more present than ever. Um, so to, to get to your question, Pam, I'm in the office, but I don't think there's any escaping the teleconferencing. I think it's here. It's here to stay. Mm -hmm. Think, think, think. Thank you for point, point, pointing that out and, um, you know, sharing that because, uh, yeah, I think hybrid relationships and hybrid communication isn't going anywhere since it exploded during, you know, the, you know, the, the pandemic time. So um, this is a great time to, you know, open it up and ask, you know, ask people, you know, your thoughts. Um, you know, I have some talking points, but like the first question I'd like to just ask is what do people think of Zoom? Does anybody, you know, have any feel, feel, feelings about that, Michelle? So I'm a Zoom veteran. I was using Zoom even prior to the pandemic. So I went into 2020 already knowing Zoom already knowing what to do and not scared by it, one of the few. Like everybody else, I've also been using it. But what I find potentially interesting, especially when, when we're talking about Zoom as it relates to the, the stuttering community, mm -hmm. and I tried to get a group that I moderate to answer this, but they didn't get it. Um, how do people think, think or feel about Zoom as an accommodation for the phone? We know that people who stutter often don't like speaking on the phone. Um, what do people think about Zoom as offering, Zoom, and, and I'm, I'm looking at this in an HR context, in a professional context, in an educational context. What do people think about um, Zoom as an accommodation for her, for her phone? or any video conferencing really. I think that's a really interesting question. And when you're talking about ADA accommodations, um, you know, uh, that is, um, in my pen, 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 opinion, an easy accommodation to offer. Mm -hmm. um, and in most cases, it doesn't cost any money. You know, exactly, exactly. that's one of, I think that's one of employers um, concerns when, 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 you know, they're talking about accommodations like, you know, um, and stuttering is like one of the easiest um, 
disabilities to accommodate for because you don't have the expense of like installing a wheelchair ramp mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. you know, having to uh, purchase, you know, um, uh, computer reading software for like visually impaired, you know? So, so, I mean, I think it's a, 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 a great, great, great alternative given that people feel comfortable using zoom you know like I, I i i've heard and i hope people will talk about this you know i've heard that people are not really comfortable using zoom or other video plat for for form form forming uh um uh media because they don't like seeing themselves stutter you know on screen um you know so I think maybe that's part of like the love hate relationship. I think it's a reasonable accommodation, but it would only be an accommodation if people peop peop people are really okay with using, right, you know, but um, I, I think, you know, I, I'm interested in hearing other people. And, that, and that's the question that I tried to get out of, of my group is if you're in the camp that doesn't like using the phone, how do you feel about using Zoom? And would you feel that Zoom is an accommodation? But my my uh, uh, my group didn't get it. So I'm curious to hear what this group says. Yeah, yeah. Mitch? Yeah, hi. Um, I think that's a great question, but I'm sorry. And I would wanna know what is the accommodation part are you uh for you personally is it more about you seeing yourself on screen or is it seeing the other person because there's two parts of the teleconference mm -hmm. yeah. for me i do like teleconferencing i like to see the other person that's what part is helpful for me i i first want to see what part of the zoom do you see helpful? Well, I mean, I'm not in the camp because I, I'm not in the camp of I don't like phone. But mm -hmm. I was just thinking about it as there are a lot of people who stutter who avoid the phone like the plague, for lack of a better of a better terminology. And I was curious about for that camp, how do you feel about Zoom versus the phone? Is it one and the same or is it is Zoom somehow better? or do you prefer that over the phone? I think um, just like a lot of things having to do with stuttering, it depends on the individual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, clearly. It's possible that, that holding something up to y your face is difficult. We're just having not even the video at all, just talking to the computer might mm -hmm. be enough of an accommodation. For me personally, I like to see the person on the other line because I remember when I was on the phone, my thought was always like, are they laughing on the other side? Exactly. I'm never going to exactly. leave. Yeah, a yeah, exactly. So to exactly. see the other person mm -hmm. was very helpful. For others, it might be they want to be seen because when they stutter, it shows that they're trying to talk. So um, I I think it's it's that Zoom can be used in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. and that it can be an accommodation, but accom it it, it depends on how you want to use it because your accommodation can't require the other person to be on the other side. Um, it, it's nice that they want to do that too, but that other person sits, sits, still has the choice of having the video on or off. That's true, yeah. But I do think it's, in a, you know, it's important in the context of um, the ADA law, the Americans mm -hmm. with Disabilities mm -hmm. Act, mm -hmm. um, you know, where, um, you know, employers and, you know, um, um, uh, places that are open to the pub, 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 public, you know, are required to offer reasonable mm -hmm. accommodation, yep. you know, yep. to people yep. with 
disabilities. So, um, you know, if a person who stutters that, you know, requ requests, um, you know, a teleconference for like a job interview as opposed to the phone, because it, mm -hmm. they would feel more comfortable, yeah. um, you know, I, I do believe that is a reasonable accommodation, yeah. um, you know, and to Mitch's point, if the person, you know, if, if the potential employer, you know, um, um, you know, agrees to that request, I, I don't see any reason why, um, because it's reasonable, I don't see any reason why they would feel like they shouldn't be on the call and shouldn't have the camera on. So, you know, it's a very interesting it's a it, it 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 it's an interesting point certainly to c consider and it's um you know it it I'm glad you asked that Michelle. Thank you. Yeah, if I could bring up a point, um, I I feel that you know the the basic aspect that we want to do is communication, and communication isn't uh, you know only the the verbal interaction you know it's the body language thing and of course with Zoom. Uh, we, we do have a partial body language. We see the person from the, the shoulders up. <laughs> now, for me, I find that, you know, if I'm interacting with Pam, like I did at the NSA convention, I, I, I'm more attuned uh, to the whole body language. You know, right now, I'm only seeing Pam from the shoulder up. <laughs> but, when, you know, like when I was uh, chatting with you, you know, and we were sitting side by side, Pam, you know, I, I find my self to my experience that I'm attuned to the whole body language. And so I felt I could communicate totally more effectively seeing you in person rather than Zoom. But I do feel that that Zoom for me is certainly an advantage over the phone. Good points. I, I, if I could add uh, another thing about the social norms of a group conversation, I think people on a Zoom chat are more likely to look out for turn taking. <laughs> uh, one one reason for the very uh, thing that Patrick just said that we're able to see all of our faces in one little thing here, but also people know that we're not together and. Uh, I guess there's something about that that says, hey, let's all take turns and not talk over each other, where if we were all in a group, it's easier to break off into side conversations and then competing for who says the next word. We still compete for who's, who talks next, but I think it's um, it's... I think on a Zoom chat or teleconferencing that there's more looking out for it. Yeah, and we have the, you know, the 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 cues of the, you know, raise hand, lower hand, you know, and so we can, you know, we can we can use the built-in reactions from Zoom or Teams, um, and people also, you know, freely, you know physically raise their hand, you know, and you're right. That's an excellent point. There's more attention to turn take, take, taking, I, I think, than there is when we're, you know, together and sometimes competing to get, 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 a, get, get, get a word in edgewise. And here we are, people who stutter and, you know, we love to talk. <laughs> Others, what are others, others thoughts on, um, you know, the question that Michelle brought, 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 brought up or just, you know, your feelings or thoughts on um, just using yes. Zoom peer, peer, period. My question goes one step further because this is where my, where my group got kind of fixated on. I don't mean it specifically as a group chat, but I mean it for things that you typically would use the phone for, to call your landlord, to call your, your management company, to make a doctor's appointment, to do these sorts of things that typically require you picking up the phone or at one point did. My thought on this and what I really wanted to get them to talk about was if you had the option of Zooming your landlord, Zooming your pharmacy, Zooming your doctor, rather than having to call, would you? Hmm.
it's an interesting point. I don't know, you know, I, I, I I I I don't know if those providers just, slash vendors, you know, would do that. Um, yeah, because I mean, that's the side of accommodation that I was looking at was more of the public accommodation of disability rather than the private accommodations for individual employees. Although I'm not saying that that is unimportant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder if you know um, some of that is um being encompassed by like you know the apps and like you know like you can go to you can go to a restaurant now and like you know order mm -hmm. your meal using a kiosk right. you know so i mean maybe that is moving us towards 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 the way it's going to be um you know you know uh, during the pandemic, I got very comfortable seeing medical providers um, through telecon con conferencing. Like, I have a I I have a app that's called Doctor on Demand, <laughs> you know. And 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 it's you know at first I was a little intim tim tim intimidated by it, but you know the providers made themselves available like that. And um, I found actually that they spent more time with me <laughs> in the 15 minute, you know, help, you know, tele telehealth visit than, than might have happened if it had been an in-person visit where they were running late or they had an emergency or, you know, so um, it's definitely an interesting question, you know, maybe, you know, maybe we're moving more towards that, you know, especially, you know, when we talk about AI, you know, <laughs> coming on the, come, 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 coming to fruition, maybe faster than we hope for. <laughs> but um, what about, you know, like, um, what challenges come 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 with you come with e e using zoom well or i i i like to bring up one challenge that uh, that hasn't been mentioned is mm -hmm. the, the technology challenge now zoom has really improved over the years but but the technology challenge was you know losing the communication you know having your 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 audio or your your video the uh try to you know break up and it doesn't have anything to do with our speech and i'm citing myself as an example as uh, my landlady and uh her husband are gracious enough to let me you know go off of their internet connection and mm -hmm. and i live in a quote granny flat that i, I live in the lower level of their their second story house well their um their router is upstairs and so you know having that connection go through i was continually losing it and someone who has at most marginal technology skills are trying to solve this problem and asking people how do i you know get these connections and fi finally you know we had to get a wi-fi extender and put it downstairs in my apartment and it's not easy because you have to you just don't you know have a plug into the outlet there's a way to 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 connect it and of course my marginal skills was challenging and then i had to learn that that uh through consulting with other people that I had to uh, uninstall Zoom and then reinstall Zoom. And, you know, and all this took, you know, many hours of research. And, and so that was a big part of my love-hate relationship with Zoom, not so much my speech, but the damn technology. You know, that's a really good point, Pat, 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 Patrick, um, you know, again, with tech, Techno tech not technology and stuttering, you know, sometimes what happens, you know, on Zoom is like somebody's somebody's little box will freeze, <laughs> you know, and all of a sudden, you know, they're not there, they're but their picture is, or you know, they're caught in like mid-sentence, like, you know, like, <laughs> you know, or sometimes when that hap 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 happens because we 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 stutter sometimes i've wondered is, okay is the person in a block 
<laughs> you know, it, it, or are, you know, are they stuttering and block, 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 blocking, or is there really a technology prop, 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 problem? Um, so I find that to be, yes, I, I agree with you on the tech, 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 technology part can be really frustrating. Danny? Yeah, I was just going to say, so kind of similar to the point you made about, you know, not knowing whether it's a technical issue or whether it's a block. I think for me, the most difficult part about Zoom has been kind of the, the initial part of entering the conversation. Mm. So especially in a Zoom room or a meeting that doesn't really use the, the raise hand function, mm. kind of entering the conversation, especially because I tend to block, is really difficult. So there have been countless instances where I've tried to unmute myself and say something, but then, you know, somebody who's fluent will not even notice mm -hmm. and they'll start speaking. And it's just frustrating to kind of have to go through that, you know, in terms of, I might even unmute myself and I might block and get like a little bit of a sound out, but that might not even register, you know, and at that point it would depend on like my audio and like their audio. So um, that to me has been the most difficult part is kind of just like that point of entry into the conversation. Um, and I think, yeah, I'm just seeing the chat. Oh yeah. So Mitch asked. Um, yeah. So I find that entering the conversation on zoom is more difficult than, than in person. Um, I think because you can just kind of pick up on social cues in person more 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 than you can on Zoom, you know, kind of like what we've been talking about. When 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 we're on Zoom, it it kind of spotlights your voice, you know. Um, whereas when you're in person, you know, um, like like Patrick said earlier, you kind of just pick up on the person's whole body language. You pick up on you know some of the cues, even like physically kind of leaning forward more or moving in to kind of indicate that they're trying to enter the conversation. That type of stuff is you know very difficult to read on Zoom. Um, so again, it's kind of just that initial, like, all right, like, can everybody just kind of clear the floor for me to start talking? And then like once that happens, I'm good, but that's very difficult sometimes. Um, Brendan, I saw you nodding your, 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 your head. What do you, what do you, what do you think about Danny's great point? Yeah. You, you know, you know, Danny's comments, uh, really resonated with, uh, with me because it, it, um, I, I find that for me, it is often that, that entry point and to, to your, to your exact point, Danny, you know, when, when you're in a room, you can see if somebody kind of shifts in their seat a little bit and you can see if someone's hands are up because you know they're, they're, they're just these cues that don't exist um and so we we have to we have to come up with ways to to kind of compensate for that um and what are those ways to compensate i'm not i'm not really sure what I, what i have found though is that um you know there's there's really no substitute for just being a stubborn, you know what? <laughs> like, 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 if you want to say something, you know, uh, I, I mean, I mean, I'm sure that you know some of you work with colleagues who, like, like if they have something that they that needs to be heard, they're going to say it. And um, I, I really think that it's on all of us to, you know, like, like if you're struggling. If you're blocking at the outset, keep doing what you would do, even if people picked up picked up the social cues. Now, saying that, I don't think I always do that. This, this is more of a goal, but but maybe the goal is uh, for 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 us to not be mentally as as dependent on the social cues of others. 
Like may, maybe that's the solution. I don't know. What do you think? Danny, do you want to com 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 comment? Yeah, yeah. No, I think. Um, I mean, I'm also. Um, I've also thought about, you know, how we can kind of resolve this um, issue. I guess we call it. Um, and I think one way is, and again, <laughs> this is also kind of a goal. This is so, a somewhat more of an aspiration than actually something that I do but um I think even having a conversation so for example if you find that this tends to happen in work meetings potentially speaking with your boss or speaking with your supervisor about you know ways that you know we can all build more awareness regarding you know if someone is trying to join in on the conversation via zoom or you know what would it look like if we you know, try to use the raise hand function a bit more, um, you know, just kind of advocating for yourself in that way. That That's kind of one of the first things that comes to mind. Um, and I think in addition, that that can kind of, that, that can be used um, in conjunction with what you were saying, Brendan, about, you know, maybe just kind of still sticking with it and, st and still being persistent regardless of what other people are doing. So I think the those two things can potentially be complementary. I, I I what comes to mind from what you both were saying is, you know, being assertive, you know, and I and 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 you know, I think maybe sometimes assertiveness, people who stutter struggle with that um as well as perhaps we stuck we st struggle a little bit with um you know social skills which includes when and how to enter conversations because many of us um didn't really get good practice at those things because as people who stutter growing up we avoided <laughs> talking a lot i think many of us and um you know, we tried not to join conversations, maybe, 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 because we, for fear of how other pe people would react, you know, so good points. Um, Mitch, and then we'll go to Steve. Yeah, I uh, ha had a point um, going back to something Brendan had said, and then uh, Danny's point kind of uh, overlaps with this also. Um, Earlier, Brent, um, Brandon, you had said how being on Zoom, uh, being on the Zoom platform makes it more performative. Mm -hmm. And I, when I heard that, I, I'm wondering if the performative part is really about the Zoom platform itself or is it about the meeting part? Because usually, if you're going on to a Zoom, it's for a meeting, especially if it's work-related. Mm -hmm. So meetings in itself, especially work ones, are performative by nature. Mm -hmm. And it might not be about the Zoom platform. When Danny brought up his point that uh, you feel like you're on um, that the spotlight is on you in trying to get in. Is that uh, a work-related meeting where you're trying to get in, or is that in like a casual Zoom um, hangout amongst friends? Mm. Um, when during the pandemic, there was a group of us who on Saturday mornings. There were a few people from all, all over the world that would just get together and hang out and talk about nothing. <laughs> and I found those uh, to be very casual, no stress at all. And then a meeting like this, as friendly as it is, I think that there is a performative sort of element. Mm -hmm. So I so I think it's important to tease apart the meeting 
versus the actual p- p- platform itself that's m- making it feel like it's uh, performative. Hmm. Great, 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 great points. Steve? Yeah, so um, I was, it was really, uh, 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 really, um, uh, really, uh, 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 when I uh, went to you know, work from work from home and had video all the all the uh um, all the uh all the uh um the the uh um the the uh um the um time I was like wow how am I going going to do uh, do, do, uh, yeah, do this and uh, um and I think um I know it had been, um, it had been, uh, been, uh, um, been, uh, been, uh, um, been um, asked about, you know, um, what was the hard, hard, you know, seeing three people, four pe- people, five, eight people on a screen. Now they were, I know, in a, in, uh, um, in, uh, um, in, uh, um, in a uh, hip person had the same thing, but now it just seemed all in one, at least being in a uh, um in a uh, hip person, I had gotten uh gotten um used to, you know, where to look or who to look at or look at the screen. So here it was like that was like really hard. What I guess has helped me is that now I look at the white light that's at the at the uh <laughs> Um, at the uh, like at top, and I don't. I try not to look at you know at uh, um, at uh, your people, um, you know. So that's something that is actually you know that that uh, one part of that's actually probably helpful because it makes it look like maybe I'm looking at um, at the uh, your screen. So that's one part that has helped helped me, and it took you know maybe a few weeks or so. Um, and then I would say the you know other thing that has helped me is that with like very you know, um, if I go in in a work um, meeting and it's uh, it's um an an intense one or it's you know a your tougher one for whatever reason if I get a get a uh, have a um, have a uh, get chance to prepare be beforehand like say I have to give an uh um an um, update um I write out in word you know your document and then I can kind of read I have the screen I have the uh have the uh um have the uh the people on the left hand side and then I have my notes you know one um uh, one liners that I can go through and try to stick to my script and just get the main, uh, uh, main, uh, uh, main, uh, uh, main, uh, uh, main, uh, your points, trying to use my fluency techniques that probably Brendan and I <laughs> learned in speech, in, in speech, uh, speech, I uh, 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 therapy, um, uh, not that I'm, uh, uh, to perfect with it, but it has seemed helpful and lose me, you know, uh, uh, lose me, uh, uh, lose me, I uh, get through, uh, uh, through, through, uh, um, through, um, thanks. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Great, 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 great point. Um, so I, I have another, I have another, um, uh, sort of relate it. What do people think about, um, you know, either being told or you having to tell someone you're on mute? <laughs> How often do we hear that? <laughs> Does it bother anybody? No? I sometimes, I know for me, 
like early on, you know, like I, you know, I'd start talking and I'd realize I was on mute and I would be embarrassed, you know, when somebody would point out you're on mute. And like, I feel like I might've said like 30 or 45 seconds worth of stuff. And I'm like, oh, nobody heard, 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 heard me. And, you know, like, I don't, I don't, I don't like to repeat myself because I feel like sometimes I'm already repeat, repeat, repeating myself, but um, I just hear that a lot. Like, you know, you're on mute, you know, and <laughs> you, I just think you would think at this point, like that we'd be over that, but I, I still, I still see that happening a lot. <laughs> um, Pam. Doug. It, um, is that though as bad as uh, when you are talking and you are being, you know, real fluent, and someone for some ungodly reason says, "What did you say?" or "I didn't quite, uh, you know, get that." Is is it as bad as that? Having to say, "Oh my goodness, I was fluent. I said it fluent. Why didn't you understand what I said?" And you have to say it again. <laughs> Um, I don't think it's as bad. I mean, yes, go ahead. Yeah, it's not. It's it's definitely not. I know. I I I I I know what you're saying. Like if you you know if I somehow like magically sound you know perfectly fluent, and then somebody just asks me because of you know we're we're human, and somebody asks me to repeat that, and then I stutter, you know, on what I was just fluent on, you know. To me, that just is like, oh God, like, you know, the variability of stuttering, it's like something else, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. What about you, Doug? You, you, I know you use Zoom a lot, you know, do you love it or you hate it? Uh, yeah, when uh, Brenda said uh, something about, you know, uh, there are times you just have to be this person that will, you know, say something that will make sure that they have, a, that they get the attention. Uh, I thought he was talking directly at me because that's pretty much who I am. Um, <laughs> whether I am in person or on Zoom or on the phone, I tend to make sure that I'm heard. Um, like Michelle, I had experience with audio, uh, video, long before Zoom came on the scene because I was in IT. And in fact, I had to deal with this thing called uh, telepresence. Uh, Brendan, have you heard that term? I don't think so, no, tell us about it. Long time ago, it was probably early 90s. Um, that was uh, when they built rooms that were, specifically for audio, video communication all around the world. And since I worked for a foreign owned company and I was um, in IT, I had to um, set up these rooms. And so I had to you know, test them. So uh, oftentimes I would go in the room have the you know screens up there and the big huge um, microphone there on the table, and I had to call someone in Germany or call someone in Brazil. So I had the experience, and in the beginning, it was nerve wracking. I mean, just like with the phone. Uh, but after a while, I said, okay, um, you got on there. And the biggest thing that I had to get comfortable with is people seeing me stutter. Whereas when I was on the phone and there was a pause or something, they didn't really know exactly what was going on. And since I have a stutter where there's a lot of solid blocks and you can see, you know, the um, secondaries, it was hard for me to hide. So I had tons of practice doing that. So by the time Zoom started to come around, it was a whole lot um, easier. I love Zoom because I like to see other people's faces and I like them to see mine. 
The only issue that I have sometimes is I tend to talk loud. So I usually always check to see if I'm too loud. <laughs> never, Doug. You're never too too loud. <laughs> Two interesting com com comments in the chat in the chat section. Um, uh, Danny mentioned, and I'm reading some of these because, as Brendan mentioned, his chat is disabled, so he doesn't see these. So Danny mentioned that he always stu stu stutters when someone asks him to repeat something, you know, similar to what I, 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 I said. And um, Stacy wrote, and hey, Stacy, so glad to see, see, see you here. Stacy wrote, what about when you're in a really good solid stutter and somebody says, did your camera freeze? Uh, no, nope, just my mouth, you know. <laughs> That is a phenomenon unique to unique to Zoom, right? Yeah, and like, how often does that happen? Has anybody no. experienced that? Doug? Well, I, I was just gonna add, um, um, Steve said, you know, some of the things that he does, he have his, his, um, notes on the side and he has the you know faces there the um, thing that i found is, is is to try to find different things that you can do to just feel as comfortable as possible whether it's on the phone or in person or on a screen just find ways um either have all of your notes written or or you in a room or you in a shirt that you like whatever it is um just try to feel as as comfortable as you possibly can. Yeah, that's a good point. I have a pretty blouse on and pajama bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> I love being able to be comfortable <laughs> like this, right? <laughs> um, like, so one more talking point, and then we'll probably begin winding down unless others have, you know, more really cool stuff to share um when you're in a zoom meeting like here here all of us you know stut 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 stutter so this is unique because this is a, a community of people who stutter that are in this zoom meeting but when you're in a work meeting and you may be the only one that stut stutter stutters um and you're on a teleconference do you try to verbally participate or do you prefer to use the chat option? I'm just curious about that. What are what are people's thoughts about that, if any? Mitch? Yeah, I I think um I I think you're asking if people prefer to chat instead of talk. Mm -hmm. um i tend to use the chat when i don't want to interrupt the flow of conversation mm -hmm. and so just because i use the chat that doesn't mean that i'm using it to avoid actually speaking so i think people use the chats for different reasons i think it's great that people have the chat as an option if they don't want to talk mm -hmm. because it's a way that they could still communicate um i do worry about those who will all will, who will use that as a crutch and an out to never try to speak yep. so that's a concern mm -hmm. but that's me forcing my views of speech onto someone else. And I don't know if that's right to do either. I agree, Mitch. I mean, that's my whole, um, not argument, but concern as well, that people often who stutter don't want to put themselves out there and they don't want to advocate and they don't want to try something new. So yeah, my concern is, I mean, you, you're, you're spot on. People avoid 
speaking by using the chat too often. And it does get, not dangerous, but um, it, it, it creates a crutch. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, good, 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 good point. I, I, I sometimes uh, browse some of the uh, different stuttering groups that there are both on like Facebook and Reddit and Discord. And some, sometimes I see people will, you know, be much braver in, you know, at their keyboard <laughs> than they might be if they actually spoke, spoke, you know, spoke verb spoke verbally or you know used used their used their voice um and you know to michelle's point i've often wondered you know kids today even you know those that don't stutter the 99 percent that don't stutter you know many 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 young people just don't know how to have a con con conversation you know, because they've grown up with instant right. messaging, you know, yeah. so I wor wor worry about them when it comes to, you know, I worked for, with young, with young adults and, you know, um, and, and kids for years, you know, I had, to, you know, students had difficulty picking up the phone to call yeah. Yeah. a potential internship, you know, and I just worry about, you know, those kids that have no communication or conversation skills, mm -hmm. how are they going to be able to conduct themselves in an interview, you know, yep. and they don't stutter, you know, yep. so definitely it, 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 it has, it has, it, 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 it has the potential to, you know, limit people and become a crutch and, um, you know, sometimes foster, um, keyboard warriors that will say things that they might not ever say in real life. Um, any fine, 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 final thoughts, questions, the heed, feedback? Yeah, Mitch. Yeah, I wanted to say this was a great conversation and appreciate you guys uh, host, hosting this. Uh, I think there was a lot of interesting conversation that came for, from this. Um, for those of us that were at the conference this year, we were fortunate enough to hear Pam give the uh, one of the keynote speeches. And for those of you who were not there, I just want to share that she did an unbelievable job with a great message to the NSA this year. And I just wanted to recognize that and congratulate her for, 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 for an amazing job. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Like, don't try to embarrass me. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to embarrass you. <laughs> Um, two more quick, uh, oh, Sarah said Pam is a rock star. Um, but there's two more really good comments in the chat section. Um, Chintia, this is a good point. Sometimes when she's in a position to speak a lot over Zoom, she'll cover parts of her screen to help keep her from fixating on people's faces while stuttering and that helps her focus more on what 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 she's saying that's a really good 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 point to bring 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 up and then sammy um uh also wrote that speaking on zoom and teleconferencing um frequently end up opening a different screen so that um the, so that um doesn't have to look at the audience, but feels like this is an avoidance behavior, similar to like minimizing eye con 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 contact in person. So um, there's definitely you know pros and cons here. Um, and uh, and Mitch 
Mitch has a, you know, like a final com, 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 comment. Um, and I think I mentioned it earlier and it was one of my, one of the questions. Um, Mitch is curious to hear if anyone has difficulty looking at themselves stuttering. Yes. Big time. Yeah. Who's, who's saying that, Steve? Yes, I, yeah, I am. So, so um, I do. Um, lately, though, I started to look at myself not here, when, when I've had, when I've had, um, had like a trouble and then I um, kind of helps myself and the kind of, I kind of see what I'm doing, like if I'm blocking, I sometimes, I then, it, it does help me maybe release. So I, I'm mm -hmm. going to, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to do that a little bit more and more. And I heard about it from someone else in a different group who, um, he was in, a, he worked in a call bus. Uh, which I couldn't believe that, that he did, but he was like, um, he, uh, did, I uh, did that, uh, you know, as a, uh, as a, uh, as a, as a, uh, um, a, a, uh, um, a, a uh, stutterer, and they had, they made people or parts of the work thing was to have a mirror, um, so that they could smile through. The point was not for the, uh, like, so they could smile through, and that it seemed to help him at teaching. That's scary to me, but I was like, okay, maybe I can use that, um, a little bit. So, yes, it's scary and everything, and, uh, so, but I've started to make use it here and there. Thank you. And um, Sarah wrote that she she tends to avoid looking at herself when she when 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 she stut 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 stutters. Um, Chintia, do you do you do you want to share what you've written? I, I mean, I feel so funny like reading people's comments in the chat. Do you do you want to share what you've just written? Sure. I I, I was just saying that a I, I saw Mitch's comment about um, difficulty looking at ourselves while we stutter, and it, it triggered a memory of a conversation I had with a friend of mine who stutters and. He had said that part of his his speech therapy as an adult was to have a mirror up on his desk mm. to actually have to look at himself while he was talking on the phone. And the two parts of that were to, uh, to first help him grow in acceptance of what he looked like as a person who stuttered, but also to uh, um, to learn more about the mechanics of his mouth. Uh, 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 while he was speaking as well to help with that. So I haven't tried it yet, but I would like to, just haven't gotten to that point where I, really, I just remembered to um, to do that, but I would like to. Hmm. Good point. I've heard, I've heard, I've heard, I've heard of that used in um, speech ther ther therapy. I want to even say, and maybe um, Stacy can just confirm this. I think the successful stuttering management program SSM SSMP used mirror work way back in the day. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had you've had experience with with mirror with mirror work. Yeah, 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 good, 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 good points. Um, thanks, thanks for sh sh sharing that. Did you want to add something else, Stacy? No, no, no. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Brendan, uh, I'm going to toss it back over to you to see if you have any, you know, final words or and 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 
and anything that you'd like to comment on on what's recently been shared? Uh, the first thing I want to say is thank you to everybody. I, I uh, so many insightful points tonight, both around um, how you yourself approach it, what works for you, but but also kind of some some points some points that I think that 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 apply to everybody, um, especially around kind of the you know the the social dynamic of um, you know I mean I mean I mean. Speech is not just what's coming out of your mouth. Speech is speech is what we all share together, um, and so I, I I felt like a lot of the a lot of the points are around that. Um, two 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 very quick last things I want to add. Number one, um, I don't think this topic is going away. I mean, um, tel teleconferencing is here. Uh, that's point number one. Point number two builds on that. What if Mark Zuckerberg is right and the future is the metaverse? Then like not, not only are we going to be dealing with this, but um, you know, like 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 it's only going to get more into the into the ether. Um, for the time being, I'm, I don't want to walk around with those head that thing on my face. You know, like I don't want to have an iPad attached to my face, but it may be that 10 years from now I'm going to have to. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think that the one thing we can all be sure of is this, this topic is not going away. It's going to get deeper and deeper. Yeah. Brendan, thank you so much for, um, wanting to explore this top, 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 top topic and, um, you know, for share, sharing your insights and, um, you know, get, you know, inviting this conversation. Um, and it was great co-facilitating with you. Working, working with the expert, working with the best, who is Pam. 